Hey Mark, how are you? Hey Alex, I'm great, how are you? I am super well, thank you, and I'm pretty excited that we're doing this together. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, we've been chatting about it and we finally uh, got serious and and got it done basically, yeah. the launch to the world, here it is. Here it is, I'm so excited. So for years now I've been talking about um, helping people transition to safer cookware and uh, for years I have been trying to track down all over the world really good quality stainless bakeware. And there's mm. a lot of tinny stuff out there. There's a lot of flimsy things that kind of buckle as soon as they go in the oven. Um, and there's yeah. a lot of stainless with high nickel content. Nickel's something that concerns people. And when yeah. we became friends and started talking, I plucked up the courage one day to say, hey, I've been thinking about this thing. And you said, hey, crazy, but I have too. So here we <laughs> are. And, um, and it's so awesome when values align. We've talked about this before in our chats over coffees. And, uh, and at some point, you, you started to think about Noni stainless steel. And I'd love for you to just share in, in a little bit more detail how that journey panned out for you. Yeah, panned out. Ah, nice puns. <laughs> there's, not, there's not too <laughs> For the There's dads out there friends. wanting a dad joke, love it. <laughs> yeah, we got to take them where we can in the world of cookware. It's not that humorous a lot of the time. It's just plain hard work. Yeah. Oh, that was so, so good. Appreciate it. Thank you. They're always better when you don't mean them too, hey? <laughs> yeah. But I never miss them, you know that. 26-centimetre skillet. Now, that's in wrought iron. And as you know, you've been using them like a lot of the top cooks, uh, you know why they're such a good thing. Um, you pre-season them with oil and they become naturally non-stick, so it's non-toxic, you can renew it forever. Um, it really becomes a good non-stick. Only one slight drawback, if there's anything, it, it's a bit of maintenance, you know, you've got to know how to season it. It's not hard, but, um, you know, if you don't look after it, it gets kind of scratched up, mm. which is not a big deal. Um, but if you cook acidic sauces in it, um, or if you want to deglaze uh, some meat and make a nice sauce, um, it's kind of uh, uh, harsh on the seasoning, so you can lose the seasoning. That takes more maintenance to fix it and things like that. Not a problem for people who love the natural, non-toxic, non-stick. They just do it, and that's why that's been such a big seller um, around the world. Yeah, they'll go on for centuries. It's one piece. You yeah. can't hurt it. That's right. And, you know, with you having the value of longevity as like pretty much your top value in business, isn't it? That multi-century yeah. offering. Yeah. And our warranty really is multi-century. It freaks people out a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds crazy. But multi-century is easy. I mean, yeah. any engineer who looks at these pans made as one piece and from this material that also doesn't crack, you know, it's, it's really obvious they're going to go on for several at least several centuries we just don't know how many so we just got to say multi-century mm, totally <laughs> and so from there the stainless steel to go offering. to stainless steel well i said we've got to get these done in stainless steel somehow uh because of uh the low maintenance aspects of stainless steel and being able to use acidic sources and deglazing all that stuff so i said to our uh, engineers uh let's get it done in stainless steel and I thought it would be impossible because our iron was almost impossible and that stuff's fairly easy to work relative to this type of stainless steel. The other challenge was stainless steel is notoriously a bad conductor of heat. Mm. So how are you gonna solve those problems, you know? Uh, so a lot of study, a lot of prototyping, a lot of failures, you yeah, know, we just kept on not succeeding until we succeeded the old yeah. cliche you know yeah just kept on taking samples trying new things they kept on self-destructing we couldn't make a seamless one piece pan until this guy Beautiful. Our very first, the very first and um that's just a rough prototype with no stamping or anything on it but uh that worked we figured out the formula for getting um a flat sheet of stainless steel raw into a one-piece pan um, and again with no rivets or with the same patterns and uh, even better 
uh, with a type of stainless steel that no one else was using, it's nickel-free stainless steel. So that solved two things at the same time that I insisted on. Uh, one was it had to be a great conductor as a solid piece. So if we used regular stainless steel, nickel-based stainless steel, it would be such a poor conductor that you'd have hot spots, you'd have um, um, very slow heating, um, poor response, big waste of energy input as well to keep them hot. Mm. Um, so that, this is highly conductive. It's almost as conductive as our iron pans and it shocks people. Um, and then uh, to be nickel-free because, um, you know, I've told you before that we studied fairly carefully uh, nickel coating our iron pans for people who wanted low-maintenance pans. Um, where the further I got into it, and I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm not a biochemist, but I, you know, I'm a pretty good researcher when it comes to materials and manufacturing. So anyway, the, the deeper I dug into it, the more obvious it became that nickel is a potential problem. Mm. And leaching nickel into food is a big enough problem in Europe that it's uh, nickel-plated things are banned for contact with food. Um, nickel stainless steels are okay if they're not leaching enough nickel into food. And the reason they're concerned is uh, the studies have shown birds and small mammals and you know, organisms pretty similar to human organisms have had long-term damage from nickel accumulation in their bodies. So if we can eliminate one more thing, the cookware that's in direct contact with heat, and often acidic sources that really pulls the migration of the nickel out quicker, mm. if we can eliminate that, then that's one less thing from the toxic soup that we're all swimming in. Absolutely. Know? And I always like to tell people, you know, there's stainless steel and there's stainless steel, and the best mm. from the worst is like it's night and day. Uh, nickel-based cookware, nickel-based mm. stainless steel cookware, which is everyone else. Yeah. Uh, Everyone's used that stuff because it's easier to form, so pressing and everything, and it's easier to polish, so they end up with a prettier product mm. at the end. Yeah. They're not high values for us. No. We're more interested in health and yeah. sustainability. So that's why we rejected nickel base. And the biggest brands, all the most expensive uh, stainless steel cookware is clad cookware, so layers of stainless steel and aluminium, sometimes copper, um, but always with the nickel stainless steel on the inside because that's nicer to polish and it's uh, easier to form and everything like that. So we're getting better conductivity from solid ferritic stainless steel that's nickel free. Mm. So we've, yeah, we've done the trials, we've got the video comparisons of... Oh, uh, yeah, the two saucepans with the boiling points. I remember seeing that yeah. and thinking, wow, that so, is impressive. So, top brands with all their claims of the best clad material and expensive alongside ours, and we just kill them in mm. water boil races, all that type of conductivity. And it's well known, everyone who owns already our existing stainless steel cookware, uh, the deeper pots and the bigger pans and things like that, they all say you basically just turn down your heat settings about half of what you expect. The surprising thing as well is that it it sears meats and things or it, it roasts vegetables, it browns things much like iron. Mm. You know, a lot of people say, well, it really feels like I'm cooking with my iron pan. And that's a complex mechanism, but the lack of nickel's got a lot to do with that as well. Yeah. And, you know, nickel's an interesting one. I remember um, being asked about it in one of the very first rounds of Golotox that we did um, because someone had been diagnosed with a nickel allergy. So that was the first time I thought, oh, I don't really know a huge amount about that yet. I'm going to look into it. And, you know, there was some, there have been some cookware studies where um, they boil like some tomato-based sauce in a nickel-containing mm -hmm. pan for six hours, like like you would say a, a slow cooked thing that had some tomatoes through it. And yeah. the level of nickel from when it first went into the pan to six mm -hmm. hours into the slow cook time was 26 times higher. 
And so if yeah. you're one of these one in ten people who is said to be affected by nickel in a, often a cutaneous yeah. way, so it'll show up as eczema, it'll show up as bumps, rashes, um, contact yeah. dermatitis as well. It comes up in the research. One in ten. Ten you percent know, of the hello, yeah, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Things in history, have we now waited for some massive flare up to happen of something and gone, oh, whoops, you know? <laughs> and I just think, you know, if there's a oh, small right. amount of research that suggests caution and there's an alternative, which now there is, it's like a no brainer for me. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And, and that caution and just expecting that, that commercially sponsored scientists aren't the ones to trust, mm. you know? When yeah, those days are done. I don't, oh, it's, it's finished. When <laughs> independent scientists are ringing the alarm bells, that's when we should take notice. But when the when the corporate sponsored scientists are still saying, no, no, it's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> As they go down smoking trust. cigarettes. <laughs> exactly. Who are you going to trust? Well, look at that movie that's out now about um, the uh, whole DuPont. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'm yeah, desperate to see that. Oh, my God. And mm. um, so they're still, I mean, they're still selling the same stuff. Oh, yeah, the mod- Teflon is now just in school shorts for children. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Not. Using it on everything. Yeah, yeah, use it on everything. And so anyway, that's that's a good case of, um, and when you see what those, those, those uh, corporate scientists were saying, to defend their use of the thing mm. and you just you say well it's not just in teflon it's in almost every manufactured product yeah. that was developed for convenience for low cost uh, and you know all about with food stuff as oh, well I sure know, do it used to be the it, i mean it still is but it was the stuff that coated my favorite snack of my 20s which was microwave popcorn and there was oh. teflon coating oh. the bags so yeah, yeah and we no. won't, won't even get into um yeah additives and all that stuff you know mm-hmm. and but it just goes to show um it's our great grandmothers who knew you mm. know and, and the same thing goes for iron pants um you know they just knew the stuff works um and, and and keeping it simple and keeping things as close to nature as possible because nature's been doing it for millions and billions of years we come along and in like 150 years of industrial revolution, we think we're smarter than nature. Yeah. <laughs> and it always comes back. Oh, guess we weren't that smart after all. We better revise that. Absolutely. So, yeah. I was yeah. watching a documentary on a Qantas flight this morning and uh, it was on the Kimberley region. And they were talking about conservation and, and the beauty of the area and rightly so. And there was this old guy who was as Australian as they come, said, you give, you, you ignore nature, she gives you good hiding. And I was like, oh, that is just so true. And, uh, it is. and we've just got There's to There's a lot of ways to say that. it. Mm, they really There's are. There's a lot of ways to say it. It's a truism for a reason. It always comes back to bite us on the butt. So um, I'm super stoked we got the chance to record together and and have a chat so that people got a bit more of a window into how this all came about. But uh, I'm very, very excited to hopefully see this hot footing its way around homes in Australia. And I hope it pans out. There you go. One last little (laughs) time in there. (laughs) Well, I'm pretty sure it will. It's it's going to be on fire. It's going to be a hot product, Alex. (laughs) And we are going to stop it right there, my friend. Enjoy, enjoy. And thanks, everybody, for supporting this first edition Kickstarter. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys, for your time, too.